Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jay. He's Maddie. This is Yankee and the Brit Sports Talk. Today, we're going to do a week six preview. But first, Maddie, let them know what you got going on in Travel Story Society. Okay, so I bet the regular viewers are a bit sick of hearing it now. But I mean, just go listen to it and then you'll you'll understand what the hype's about. The new season of the Travel Story Society podcast is coming out next week. So Go check that out. It's a www.travelstorysociety.com. It's basically a podcast where we get on uh, people who like to travel around the world, or it's a lot of people from the States who just travel around the States uh, this season as well. We've got some great adventure travelers coming up. So Between the Mountains podcast talking about terrifying stunts on mountains and all of that kind of stuff. We also have... uh, National Geographic's Travel Book of the Year author Manisha Rajesh, uh, who's gonna who's gonna be on this season as well, uh, and that's coming out next week. So that's uh, www.travelstorysociety.com. All right, guys. <laughs> All right, guys. Make sure you go check out Travel Story Society. It's a good time. On to Monday night's game. We're gonna review that real quick. Man, Maddie, that was a good game, overtime. Um, Here's what blew me away about this weekend. Carson Wentz went 25 of 35, 402 yards for two touchdowns and lost, okay? Just to show the quarterback play this weekend on uh, another game, Baker Mayfield, 305, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, 42 points, first time with a loss in NFL history. Isn't isn't that the second time that... Or the third time that Baker's lost, having put 40 points up on the board or something like that. It's the first time in NFL history that a team has scored 42 points and lost without a turnover. (laughs) Right. Okay. But then... I I think Baker's lost, like, it might be over 35 points or something, but he's lost three times. Right. Over 35 points. It's really strange. And then you have Lamar Jackson, who only threw six incompletions. Lamar Jackson, (laughs) let that sit in. 37 for 43, 442 yards passing, 62 yards rushing, four touchdowns for a grand total of 505. He's just incredible. He's just lightning in a bottle. He's just a fantastic quarterback. Look, you have your doubts about his throwing and then and his accuracy, and then all of a sudden he puts up the records for the highest completion percentage. With a game over 400 yards, and everybody thinks it belongs to Drew Brees, but now it belongs to Lamar Jackson. Congratulations. Excellent, excellent gameplay from him. It just They looked like they were getting blown off the park. I was so surprised that the first half, it's not a very Ravens thing to do, like come out like not firing on all cylinders to start with, but they... Lamar Jackson just took over. And that's one of the biggest things about him is his leadership qualities. Yeah, it was a hell of a game and bad kicking continued Monday night. I know the guy's <laughs> injured, but like, geez, man, bad kicking continued. It was an awful week for kicking. Poor Carson Wentz in the Colts. That was heartbreaking. But it's kind of what happens when you have this kind of bad luck going through a season. We've talked about the snowball effect. Yeah. So it's almost like no matter what they do at this point, they're kind of screwed, it seems like. There was just nothing that they were able to do from this. There was, like, you can't really lose a game when you're that much up unless somebody does something special. And Lamar Jackson just went out and was special. And, look, if, if that's the Colts of last season, I'm not entirely sure that they let Lamar do that to them. But... When you've gone through some heartbreaking stuff, it's really easy to get your head down once somebody just starts to take over and they've not played well uh, this year. And also, the way that the Ravens play, they they tire you out. So even if they get behind, they've tired you out because you've got to focus so much on keeping contained, keeping contained. You've got to contain Lamar Jackson. You focus so much on that. It's mentally and physically draining. And then he can just go crazy on you. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, The Ravens are looking more and more scary as the weeks go on. Yeah, it was a great game. I was up watching that thinking, man, Maddie's sleeping through a good one, but he'll get to watch (laughs) it in the morning. I watched it on the way to school in the morning. Don't you worry, I got it. 
So moving on to the Packers versus Bears. I think the Packers are going to win this game. But again, NFC North rivalry game usually played pretty tough. No matter where you play, but it's at Soldier Field, historic um, uh, stadium. So it's always a fun time with that rivalry. So it should be a good game. But I got the Packers winning this pretty easy. I don't think it'll be a blowout or anything, but I think they'll probably control the whole game. Yeah, I'd say the Packers win this game. Um, it's Rodgers against a rookie quarterback, and I know they don't play directly against each other. But the, like Justin Fields is starting to look a little bit better. He's having a bit of a better, he's having a bit of better run of it at the minute. Um, but I still see the Packers win. But like you, I don't see them blowing each other out. The problem with the Packers is if they come against somebody who can shut down Devontae Adams, then I'm not entirely sure where they go because Aaron Jones is a fantastic running back, but their O line isn't the best O line for for running the ball necessarily and so if you shut down Devontae Adams then you kind of take away their biggest component but nobody's been able to shut down Devontae Adams yet so it's so it's something really difficult to say yeah and in the league nowadays when you get those top receivers it's hard to shut them down completely anyway yeah so it's it's one of those uh do you get do you pick your poison almost with if okay so let's say you take Adams out of it which means you're doubling most likely maybe even doubling with a guy over the top well then you open up more lanes for Aaron Jones so that's kind of like the pick your poison yeah cause and uh for everybody who commented on Jay's little dig at the Packers and at the Chiefs I had nothing to do with that but I do agree with him in well, they're not ticking what you were saying is Yes, the Packers are four and one, but they're not completely ticking. Is it because Rodgers was a distraction and that's why they're not fully ticking over? Is what you're kind of saying. And in the the webosphere that is Facebook, where we usually do most of our trolling and most of our work and places like Twitter as well, people just say they're four and one, they're four and one. And it's like, yeah, but you can improve. Like you can be four and one and improve. Yeah, I didn't feel really the need to defend my comment. So, but <laughs> I was just saying that they don't look as good as they did last year. That yeah. was my point. But I enjoy being called an idiot and shut the fuck ups. And yeah, <laughs> it, so it's not like I wanted to get on there and fight, but I do enjoy sitting back reading the comments. So I do read them. Just, I seen was, them all. It was just interesting to see how people took it. It was interesting to see that people just reacted going, but they're four and one, they're four and one, they're four and one. And it's like, yeah, we know that they're, they're playing well, like they're playing decent football, but they're not ticking. It's the same as the Chiefs, apart from the it's Chiefs partly, have no it's, defense. It's on me for the way I worded it too. So <laughs> whatever. The um the Packers do have quite an underrated defense, I would say. One of the more underrated defenses in the league. Um, I would I would personally say. Yeah, I think that uh their biggest weakness is corner. And um it hurts when your best corner, who's one of the top corners in the league, is out too. Never helps. Yeah. But again, we've always said Rogers can make up for a multitude of sins on the team. So I was just pointing out that, yeah, they're winning. But they're not looking like they did last year to me. That was the point I was getting at, and I stand by that. Yeah, and the Bears need to put more weapons around Justin Field, and then like that's that's the main reason that with it's going to be difficult to pit the Bears in a lot of games because you need to score points to win games, especially against teams like the Packers. So, and you know me, I blame Pace and Maggie <coughs> for the Bears. I absolutely blame the GM <laughs> and the coach for where they're at because again, you're wasting that defense. By not having an offense yeah. with a coach and, who's supposed to be an offensive guru because he used to sit next to Andy Reid. Yeah, and you don't need to have that many you don't need to have that many weapons in Chicago because your defense is good. I personally think Justin Fields is an absolute stud and I think he will be a really good quarterback in this league. You just need to let Justin Fields play his game, which is running about and ad libbing and being an athlete and just being a grown dude, and then put a few more weapons around him. But I I don't see them winning this game, but it won't be by a lot. And if Matt Crosby misses as many kicks as he did last week, then uh, maybe that's it. But 
Yeah, I don't think that'll happen again either. I, I think these kickers have a short good. memory, so I don't think it'll affect him this week either. <laughs> so Vikings Panthers. Um, I think a big thing with this game is which or both running backs play. Do either. If neither running backs play again, then I think Minnesota's got a stronger running game with Madsen in the backfield. Now, if they both play, they're both two of the top with McCaffrey and Cook in the league for running backs. I think that's a big thing on what happens in this game. Does McCaffrey play? Does Cook play? I'm not 100% sure on McCaffrey. It does look like Cook will play. So I'm not sure. Um, I'm always going to pick the Vikings. I think these two teams are probably more evenly matched than people think. It should probably be a good game. I think where the Vikings may have a little edge in the offense is even with Stefan Gilmore, if you can shut down Justin Jefferson, which we just talked about, hard to shut a dude completely down, but they still have Thielen and KJ Osborne's coming yeah. on. But if Sam Darnold plays like the first couple weeks, it's a lot harder. If he plays like last week, it becomes a lot easier. But I think they're pretty evenly matched, and it should be a good game. I've actually got the uh, Panthers winning this game. I actually really I like knew that. The, the Vikings haven't really shown me a lot. Like, I, just, I was I was really listening to the review of week four where I said, well, they lost to the Browns. Let's cut them some slack. But they lost to the Browns, and then they should have really lost to the Lions if it wasn't for the curse of Detroit, which they seem to have on them and some good play from Kirk Cousins to drive them into field goal. I know it wasn't just luck and curses. But the Panthers, for me, have looked a stronger team throughout this year, but I wouldn't be surprised if it went either way. I think these two are really evenly matched. If Christian McCaffrey trots out for the Panthers, which I will be surprised if he does, but if he does, I think the Panthers definitely win, but it's still not by a lot. But I, I'll be... I. I do think Cook will play because what they seem to be doing is trying resting Cook for the games that they know they should win and then bring him out for the closer ones. Personally, uh, this is a closer one. I'd sit him again this week because then you have a buy and it gives him three weeks to rest up. But the way Cook sounded is he's saying that he's 80, 90% wants to get back out there. And you really, if the guy is truly 80, 90%, he's better than what you have behind him at 80%. And that's not the shit on. Madsen because he's been playing well, but you're not Delvin Cook, my man. Yeah, but why not just stick Cook out with the buy as well? Then you're more likely to stick him out there because if he's eight or ninety, then you've got the buy, so he's got a full week off after this game. And this I get that. I'm looking one. at five years of his contract, not yeah. just this year. So I get it, though. I get it. Yeah, the the the, the thing with that is, is though Zimmer's trying to save his job, so he's going to... Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I would pick the Panthers because, you know, I like Sam Darnold. You know, I like the way that they play on defense. I, I was a bit upset with them for the way they played against the Eagles last week, and I think they'll bounce back from that. And, and they've just... The Vikings just haven't shown me their ability to do anything. That's the thing about Sam Darnold is that will you bounce back or do you... Revert. So oh, that's you just I'm, I'm actually waiting to see because for me, this is kind of a litmus test on we have an opposite opinion, and not that this will be the be end or, or the beginning and the end of the whole conversation. But today can like or this weekend can quiet one of us a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. If he throws five picks against the Vikings, I'm willing to say, all right, he's not as good as I thought. I'm not willing to say that'll never be good, but if he throws like three, four picks against the Vikings and stuff like that, then I'm willing to say, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but then if he, throws for five, if he throws for 400 yards, 500 yards. I hope he becomes a good quarterback, just not Sunday. But if he throws <laughs> five touchdowns with no picks, I'm going to have to come on here and be like, okay, the kid balled out, you know? <laughs> so Bengals-Lions, and I got to tell you guys, this is my upset pick of the week. Three, three two, two, one. one. I got the Lions winning a close one at home. Dan Campbell's going to run the ball, keep the clock or work the clock. And I don't think Joe Burrow is 100%. So I think this is their game. They steal it. And the Bengals have played so many close emotional games. At some point, it's got to wear on you. I do think that the Bengals will find the Lions as a difficult matchup, but the Lions just haven't shown an ability to close games. I agree. At all. So I feel like, and Joe Burrow's shown an ability when he's not 100%, like he wasn't 100% last week. 
and should have won the game. Like he should have, like he closed out that game effectively if McPherson doesn't hit the flag. But like he's a, they're just a terrible matchup because the Cincinnati Bengals refuse to protect Joe Burrow. They just refuse to protect him. And the Detroit Lions are priding themselves at the minute of trying to rip everybody's head off. So, uh, chewing like, off kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. And that's the, that's who they embody. And I think uh, the Bengals can be run on a little bit as well. And I don't think it's a, that like the Bengals are a more talented outfit. They're a more talented roster. They have a better quarterback. They have better weapons of wide receiver. Mixon's as good a running back as Swift in the league as much as I love Swift. And their defense is starting to do some bits as well. But their offensive line worries me. So they should win, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's an upset. It would be one of my bets of the week uh, that the Lions, like, cover the spread on, that, that kind of thing. All right, on to your Cowboys, Maddie, And I'll make this simple and then just get out of your way. Um, I think it's a close game until the third or until the fourth quarter. Then I think the Cowboys pull away and win it. But I think, I think Bill Belichick figures out a way to keep it close for three quarters. Sounds like a Cowboys game. This season that sounds like what the Cowboys have been doing all all season. I, Mac Jones has thrown a pick in each of his last five games, and so oh no, in each of his last three games, and he's thrown five picks. And Trayvon Diggs has six on the season. Trayvon Diggs has more picks than twenty seven teams this season so far, uh, so far this year. So I can see Trayvon Diggs getting a pick if anybody's wanting to bet on. Uh, who'll get a pick. I imagine you won't get great odds for it, but I reckon our defense will create a few takeaways. I reckon we can put pressure on Mac Jones and he... I hate comparing him to Tom Brady because it's so unfair on the kid, but this is comparing him to Tom Brady in a bad way where if you get in his face, he will break down because he's not mobile. So like, if you just keep on getting in his face, which our pass rush has been able to do, Bill Belichick is one of the best defensive coaches of all time, and I'm sure they'll find a way to make Dak Prescott think twice about a million different things. But Dak Prescott seems to be very calm so far. That year off has actually kind of obviously not helped him in some ways, but it's kind of, it's it's kind of helped him a little bit in terms of his mental state, as far as I can see. And I just like I like the Cowboys this season. Like I like I like them every season as a Cowboys fan, but this season it feels a little bit different because. You can actually justify why you like them. You can actually name every single position where they have somebody on the pitch. And Brown, as much as I see him as the weak link, was able to improve, even though I do think he'll get targeted against New England. But we're strong in the places where New England is strong and they're weak in the places where we were. They don't really have a lot of wide receiver game. And Keanu Neal will have to cover some tight ends at the end. Um, uh, out of the backfield, he'll have to find his way to covering uh, Hunter Henry and and Kazee as well. Uh, I I just see I see them winning this game. I see them running the ball a lot. It'd be really close, and then we'll break them down and we'll go for it. I agree with you in your assessment of this. So for gamblers, I would say go look at the odds if they're good. Pick the opposite prop bet that Diggs does not get a pick, only because. He's got to miss a game sooner or later. So sooner or later, that prop bet's going to hit, and you might get some really good odds. It's not that they won't, won't throw it. One. They'll eventually stop throwing it anywhere near him. Right. And so sooner hopefully or later, that's not this stop. week. Like, right. hopefully it's not this week. But they will eventually stop throwing it anywhere near him, just because we can only cover one half of the field. So, like, you know, this week might be the week you want him to stop because. I think you win if he gets a turnover or not, where there's going to be some weeks you need him to get a turnover to win. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 definitely true. Our schedule is – our get that this period of the schedule, if you took our preseason stuff, looks horrible. But if you take how every team's played so far this season, it's a really nice run to the end of it. Um, and I think winning this game really sets us off on that nice run. And, and – like, just run the ball. Just please just run the ball. No matter no matter how many people Bill Belichick puts in the box, run the ball until there is no point of running it anymore. Like, just keep on running it for the first half. And then if you don't get anything, come out and run it again for the third quarter and then just throw two wide receivers after. But just please just run the ball, like, to start with. 
Don't get drawn into Belichick making you want to throw it. So on to the Cardinals, Browns. The Browns really need to win this game to bounce back. I think, again, they'll probably keep it close. It's going to – I think it's going to be a lower scoring game than people think because I think a lot of people think it's going to be a shootout. But you're going to have two good defenses going against each other. Um, but I still got the cards winning this one. But at some point, they're going to hit a brick wall too, even if it's just for one game. I just don't think it's yet. I think it's two big running teams as well. It's not like last week where – the Chargers can just throw it on you so many ways. So you have to go score 42 points if you can't stop uh, to even try and get close to them if you can't stop them. Whereas these two are more than happy plodding their way down the field with the run game. Although they can, the, the Cardinals can hit the deep ball. Baker Mayfield needs to start throwing to Odell Beckham. Like Odell Beckham was wide open for a lot of last game and he just, like, yeah, he, he had a few drops for his, his, his first week back. So I know, Obviously, you can't complain about their offense too much. They scored 42 points. But this week, they've got to take every opportunity because the way that the cards are playing, they're taking every single opportunity at the minute. Um, I think the Browns will have a bounce-back game, but I am picking the Cardinals, but I'm picking it in a really close one, really fun game, but not as crazy as 42-47. A fun game at maybe 30-28 or something. Well, it seems like both of us feel the same way on that game. But <laughs> the Chargers-Ravens, we'll see how you feel because I know you're a big Justin Herbert fan. I like him too. But the Ravens are on an unprecedented four-game home stretch, which is unprecedented in the NFL. These guys get to sit at home for like almost six weeks before they have to travel. It's going to be a good, comfortable time for them. And I think they're just going to keep getting better, and Lamar is amazing, and I just think he's too much for the Chargers. Yeah, I'm picking the Ravens as well, just because this is a horrible matchup for the Chargers. This is their, like, in terms of a matchup nightmare, like, this is not what they want. Like it's, And, I mean, I was surprised that they managed to be the Browns with the fact that the Chargers can get run on. They can get run on a lot of the time, but the defense in Baltimore, as much as they're a bit more injured and don't have as much star power as the defense in the Browns, they play a style of football that'll confuse Herbert a bit more, I think, than the Browns just man coverage, stick Miles Garrett off the edge and go from there. But the the Browns, uh, the Ravens play a much, much more complex defense and they have people flying about everywhere. And as good as the Chargers O-line has been, the Ravens defensive front is quite scary. And it's a terrible matchup for the Chargers. I've got the Ravens winning this one. I imagine if it was in LA, I'd be more convinced to go the other way around. But the fact that it's in their stadium as well means the matchup's even worse. Well, here's the question I got for you for the next game, which is our Thursday night game. It's Tampa Eagles, better Thursday night game than like teams. <laughs> Who knows how the game will be then? We've been getting, but you're at, I think you're playing the second worst team in the NFC um, East against one of the top three teams in the NFC. I don't think there's a big question on what's going to happen. The Bucs win this game. That's it. The, the, so the Tampa Bay Buccaneers of like the Eagles have shown that their defense isn't really that strong at all. The Panthers were just a bit off it. Sam Darnold was off it last week. Um, they the the Eagles do have a defense, uh, do have an offense, but the Bucks have had Richard Sherman for one more week. He's a bit more in the system now, and Richard Sherman's come out and said, "I've never been on a team where there's so many champions, so many Pro Bowlers, so many Hall of Famers, so many people who play like champions straight off." And you know that he's just. Fit, slotted straight into that team and they're starting to rebuild their secondary their pass rush is crazy I can't see them losing that game I agree <laughs> I think the Eagles are better than we thought in close games but when they play teams that just overmatch them they're just going to get blown out like they just get blown off the field all right well moving on to our next game and to quote the guy who got a lot of hate this last weekend, your boy from the UK, H, take me back to London. So, <laughs> shout out to Ed Sheeran, I guess, too. Um, 
Dolphins, Jaguars. Now, for me, when the schedule came out, I was like, ooh, this is a game that the Jaguars can win. They're almost London's team. They're used to traveling. Well, I no longer think that they're not. They're looking awful. The Urban Meyer thing's got the whole franchise turned upside down, I believe. And so I got the Dolphins winning this game on pretty much the Jags' home turf. I'm terrified of Urban Urban Meyer going wild in my capital city. That scares me shitless. (laughs) Americans, when they travel around the world, just saying they kind of own the shit. So when Urban Meyer comes over here, and he clearly can't control himself. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to paint London red, man. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, British police arrest Urban Meyer on the on the top of the screen. Locked in the Tower of London, Urban Meyer. Hey, in <laughs> London, you're going to see the headline, Florida Man. <laughs> Florida man locked in the Tower of London. That's the one. <laughs> uh, sorry, back to the football. Uh, yeah, Dolphins win this game for me. Um, they looked okay against the Buccaneers for a little bit last week and then just got blown out because the Buccaneers just can beat you in so many different ways. Um, the Jags, they can't seem to do anything. And the... I don't want to slate the Jags too much because we knew they were going to be bad, but they just, they're they even worse than we thought they were going to be. But the Dolphins have surprised me as to how terrible they are. Like, I'm genuinely surprised at how bad the Dolphins were. I thought they were... They could have got a wild card pick. And and, and obviously, Tua Tonga-Vailoa is out, but he was apparently your main problem this year. So, so I don't really... I don't really get it for them. Uh, when Do you know when Tua's back or not? I don't. No. Does anybody know when two is back? I don't think it's definitive yet. I don't think they've made an announcement. Yeah. Otherwise, we would Otherwise, we would know. Because we're pros, you see. Uh, but, to, yeah, until Tua comes back, that Jacoby Brissett isn't playing well at all. He's a professional around the locker room like we've spoken about, but he's not playing any good game at all. And But they're luckily running into the Jags, who are not very good Either Trevor Lawrence might put have a good game, I guess. Can we have some good games in London, please? Please. Obviously it's not. It's horrific. It's horrific. Horrific. Anyway, should we move on? Sure. We'll move on to the Chiefs-Washington, and I don't even know why I talk about this game. The Chiefs are going to route them. The Chiefs are going to bounce back against the Washington team. And it's not because I think the Chiefs are back. It's because I don't think Washington can stop them with the way they're playing, and I don't think there's any way way they score nearly enough points to keep up with them. So yeah, with the Chiefs Washington game, I just I see the Chiefs winning, but the Washington football team they, they will eventually be good. They will eventually come good because their defense should be good, but it's. It's not. Like, why is it not playing all right? This is one of the games where I had down the, about the Chiefs losing at the start of the season before we realised how bad the Chiefs' defence was and before we realised how the football team's defence isn't playing right either and their quarterback's called Taylor Heineke and Taylor Heineke's good. Like, he's fine. He's, he's playing well considering, but he he's not going to win you loads and loads of games in this league. And it's a, it's not a shame for me. Like I'm pretty happy with it because they were meant to be the people that would challenge in the, uh, challenge in the uh, Cowboys. But I don't understand why their defense has dropped off so much because you would think with their defensive line against what could have been the Chiefs O-line, then this was a time for them to, win a game, but they're not going to win this game. I don't think. I, I agree with you. I don't think the Chiefs will blow them out, but I don't think it'll be that close, if you get what I mean. <laughs> yeah, the only theory I have is maybe this F- FBI investigation is more of a distraction than people think because everything coming out, even on Gruden right now, is coming out of Washington and that investigation. So maybe that's a big problem behind the scenes. Maybe some coaches or players are distracted. I don't know, but I agree with you. Defense isn't living up to what we thought they would be, but on to a game where I think another NFC East team is in trouble. Rams, Giants, I don't even think this is close. I think the 
Giants are in a bad spot. They got nailed with the injury <laughs> bug. And the Rams just look good. Yeah, with the injuries, they're not going to win this game. And that's that's the top and tail of it. Their defense doesn't have any injuries. And the Cowboys scored 40 points against them last week. So the good part of the team isn't that good. And then they're injured, to, like completely ruined on the other side of the ball. And even if Daniel Jones comes out and plays, and I'm not sure whether he's playing or whether he's not, but even if he does come out and play, you can't con- you can't recover from that sort of concussion with enough time to practice and enough time to recover properly for the game. Like if he had that sort of concussion in a European sport, like in rugby or something, he wouldn't be playing this week. He'd be out for the next two, three weeks. You're one in four, just sit the kid. Yeah. Like he's shown, has he not shown you that he's good enough? Has Daniel Jones not shown the New York Giants that he can actually play football if they just put some people that are decent around him? Like he's a good yeah. player. I think he's got the uh, the bug that a lot of mid-level quarterbacks have. They do dumb shit at the worst time, but I think he can play. Yeah, like he has athletic ability. He's able to – he throws a good ball. He's, he's a really good prospect at quarterback. Just look after the guy, back the guy. Just put Glennon in for this game because even if Daniel Jones is in, you're not going to win it anyway. So save it for some NFC's games. Some if you, you save him to spoil the Cowboys' fun, if you want. How about save it, him just for his own health later yeah, on? Yeah, exactly. But that doesn't apparently work no, in the I, NFL. They don't. So you need to give them reasons. They why don't you save him? Why don't you not kill him so he's able to play against the Cowboys if the Cowboys are going for the first or second seed in the NFC, and then you can play him, and then no doubt he'll score four hundred yards against us or whatever. Well, I do a game where I. De- Okay, so the Texans, Colts, the Texans are better than we thought they were, to quote Denny, or to sound like Denny Green, right? But um, I think the Colts are still a better team. The but Colts are no question a better team. I'm just excited to see Davis Mills play some more, but I think the Colts <laughs> win this. And if they don't, then I don't know what the hell's going on in Indy. If the if Carson Wentz plays like he did on Monday night, then they win this game. But that's the problem. You don't know if Carson Wentz is ever going to do the things that Carson Wentz is able to do. He's one of the more inconsistent quarterbacks in the league. Let's just say that. Um, yeah, I the Colts surely have to win this game because they can run the ball as well. Like They've got players. They should win this game and they should have a good defense. They just have got into a habit of losing them as much as winning is a habit, losing is a habit as well. And they're in that habit at the minute. And the Texans are better than we thought they were going to be, but are they that much better really? Yeah. I can't, I can't argue that the, neither team is lighting the world on fire, but <laughs> like I said, if the Colts don't win this one, they got to rethink everything. Onto a game where it's got a lot of clouds over it this week. The Raiders, the Bron- and the Broncos. Normally, going into this week, I would have picked the Broncos. But I think this is a game where the Raiders rally around each other because of everything that's going on. And they go out there, play their asses off, and win. But it is one of those games that could go the other way. And the cloud ling- uh, lingers heavy. And they get routed, but I think they have good stand-up people in leadership positions there that are going to be like, forget him, let's rally around each other, let's go win one for us. It's one of those teams, we've spoke about them, where it's one of those teams that need a fire lighting under their ass, and this could be the fire that has been lit under their ass. My thing is, it's in mile high, the Broncos have a good defense, the Raiders have not played well the past two games. I've got the Broncos. I've got the Broncos winning this one. Uh, Even though I still don't think the Broncos are that good, I just want to put that forward. The Broncos have only beaten shit teams so far, and then they've got beaten by the only good team that they've played. But uh, that was a bit unfair because Teddy Bridgewater wasn't playing as well. But uh, yeah, it's out mile high. The Broncos have a top, top defense. The... Alex Leverwoods of the Las Vegas Raiders loves to give away penalties whenever he can on their offensive line, and they'll make sure that he does that. Um, 
yeah, I, I think the Broncos are going to win this game. And I actually think it, it might be quite comfortable with everything that's going on at the minute. I can't argue anything you said, and I still think the Raiders rally around what happens, but we will see because sports are a game of momentum, and we'll see how they use what's going on negative or positively. Seahawks, Steelers, oh my gosh, I'm not even sure how to pick this game because you never know which team's going to th- show up. You say Ben can't throw, and then he throws two big bombs. You say Russell Wilson can't play, then he gets hurt after playing a really good game. I thought that Gino looked all right, but they didn't have time to plan against Gino. I'm reluctantly going with the Steelers. I'm going with the Steelers because I think the only good thing about the Seahawks is Russell Wilson. He's not playing. Um, <laughs> so so I think without Russell Wilson, you could say that this is one of the more underwhelming rosters in the NFL. They have Russell Wilson and they have two fantastic wide receivers. Gino Smith did look good last week and he, he looked fine, but... The Steelers are a different kettle of fish on defense. Like they, they love to get after you, and they'll get after Geno Smith. And as much as and the Steelers are starting to get a bit of a run game behind Najee Harris now, they're starting to actually be able to run the ball. So it's not only on Big Ben, but at the same, it's not going to be a barnstorming game by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think, but then it's the Steelers and the Seahawks. It's Pete Carroll versus Mike Comlin, some fantastic coaches. So maybe they managed to pull a crazy game out of the hat. But yeah, the Steelers are going to win this one, I think. But if Russell Wilson was there, then the Seahawks would win it. But Russell Wilson isn't there. So. <laughs> okay, on to the Monday night game. A team that's on fire in the Bills versus a team that seems to be struggling in the Titans. And guess what, guys? Three, Three two, two, one. one. Upset alert. <laughs> I got the Titans winning this game at home. And I have no idea why I picked that except for pure gut feeling. I just don't know why. I was looking at that game and everything in me tells me logically, Bills win, but everything inside of me for some reason says Titans so I'm going with the Titans. I've gone for the Bills because you know how much I love the Buffalo Bills and how much I love Josh Allen. But I can see why you did it. It is a terrible matchup for the Bills if you go on who they were last season. They couldn't defend the run and they can't run. So they, they're, they're not going to control the clock against the Titans by any stretch of the imagination. The Titans also just had an absolute blowout turnaround game against the Tex- uh, Jaguars. Jaguars last week? Yeah, Jaguars, where they played some incredible football. And I, yeah, it's, I still think it's the Bills for me. When you look at roster to roster, the Bills should win it. The way that they're playing, they're probably the best team in the NFL at the minute, all round as well. Um, But the Titans are a bad matchup for them, and that'll be a really close and really good game. All right, guys, there's your week six preview. (laughs) Keep your eyes open for the week six review at uh, next week. Also, you guys, do us a favor. Go over, give us some love on YouTube. Like I said, you guys love us on Facebook, and we love you for it. Could use some play on YouTube. Also, keep your eyes open. We got some interviews coming with Crazy Legs and Street Beefs. i lining up a couple more interviews with some really funny fighters. And we got, looks like, may have an interview lined up with a guy who fought at Street Beefs OG, Street Beefs West Coast, and Street Beef Scrapyard. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. One world, one love. Deuces. Cheerio.